Hi, hope you are doing well. Welcome to this session. Today I am going to take up a story with you from NCERT's English textbook for class 10. The name of the book is First Flight and the name of the lesson is The 100 Dresses Part 1. Let us recapitulate what we had done in the previous session. As we all know that this story is about three girls, Wanda, Peggy and Maddie. And we are told in the story that Peggy used to make fun of Wanda. She would ask her all the time, how many dresses do you have Wanda? And Wanda would reply, she has 100 dresses all lined up in the closet. And everybody would laugh at her, make fun of her. But Maddie used to feel bad. She wanted that Peggy should stop doing it. Now I am going to take up section 3 of part 1. Let us begin with the story. Today, even though they had been late to school, who was late? Peggy and Maddie. Mary was glad she had not had to make fun of Wanda. See, it was a great stress for Maddie to be a part of that bullying scene. So she was very happy Wanda was not there. She worked her arithmetic problems absent-mindedly and she wished she had the nerve to write Peggy a note because she knew she never would have the courage to speak to Maggie. To say, hey Peg, let's stop asking Wanda how many dresses she has. When she finished her arithmetic, she did write a note to Peggy. Suddenly she paused and shuddered. She pictured herself in the schoolyard, a new target for Peggy. Wanda was not coming. Now Mary will become the target. And the girls and Peggy might ask her, where did she get her dress that she had on? And Mary would have to say, it was one of Peggy's old ones that Maddie's mother had tried to disguise with new trimmings. So no one in room 13 would recognize it. So that was the situation with Maddie. Maddie did not have the courage to tell Peggy to stop doing that. She thought she would write a note. But you know, she could not write that also. She shuddered with the idea that, you know, Peggy might start making fun of her. If only Peggy would decide of her own accord to stop having fun with Wanda. Oh, well, Mary ran her hand through her short blonde hair as though to push the uncomfortable thoughts away. What difference did it make? Slowly, Mary tore the note into small bits. She was Peggy's best friend and Peggy was the best liked girl in the whole room. Peggy could not possibly do anything that was really wrong, she thought. As for Wanda, she was just some girl who lived up on Boggins Heights and stood alone in the schoolyard. She scarcely ever said anything to anybody. The only time she talked was in the schoolyard about her hundred dresses. Maddie remembered her telling about one of her dresses, pale blue with color trimmings. And she remembered another that was brilliant jungle green with a red sash. You would look like a Christmas tree in that, the girls had said in pretended admiration, thinking about Wanda and her hundred dresses all lined up in the closet, Medi began to wonder who was going to win the drawing and coloring contest. For girls, this contest consisted of designing dresses and for boys, designing motorboats. Probably, Peggy would win the girls medal. Peggy drew better than anyone else in the class. At least, that's what everybody thought. She would copy a picture in a magazine or some film star's head so that you could almost tell her who it was. So, Peggy was good in drawing. Maybe she was good in drawing dresses. 
So, it was a competition to draw dresses, sketches of dresses. Oh, Mary was sure Peggy would win. Well, tomorrow the teacher was going to announce the winners. They would know the next day it was drizzling. Mary and Peggy hurried to school under Peggy's umbrella. Naturally, on a day like this, they did not wait for Wanda Petronaski on the corner of Oliver Street. The street that far, far away, under the railroad tracks and up the hill led to Boggins Heights. Anyway, they were not taking chances on being late today because today was important. It was their coloring contest. Do you think Miss Mason will announce the winners today? Who is Miss Mason? Miss Mason is their teacher. Oh, I hope so. The minute we get in, said Maddie, of course, you will win Peg, I hope so, said Peggy eagerly. So, Peggy was a very vain girl. She thought that she would win the contest. Everyone was participating, anybody could, could win. The minute they entered the classroom, they stopped short and gasped. There were drawings all over the room, on every ledge and windowsill. Dazzling colors and brilliant lavish designs. See, I am repeating the words. Dazzling colors and brilliant lavish designs. The whole room was full of sketches of dresses, all drawn on great sheets of wrapping papers. There must have been a hundred of them. Can you guess something students? A hundred of them. Whose sketches are these? I think your guess is right. Must be Wanda's. All lined up. These must be the drawings for the contest. They were, yes. Everybody stopped and whistled or murmured admiringly. Everybody was, you know, awe-stricken. They were admiring the work of art. As soon as the class had assembled, Miss Mason announced the winners. Jack Beggles had won for the boys, she said, and his design for an outboard motor was on exhibition in room 12. So, it was not in this room, along with the sketches by all other boys. As far as the girls, she said, although just one or two sketches were submitted by most, all the girls had submitted their sketches, one or two drawings, one girl and room 13 should be proud of her. This one girl actually drew 100 designs, all different and all beautiful. In the opinion of the judges, any one of the drawings is worthy of winning the prize. I am very happy to say that Wanda Petronaski is the winner of the girls medal. Unfortunately, Wanda has been absent from school for some days and is not here to receive the applause that is due to her. All this while, all these girls were laughing at her. Now is the time for her to receive the applause. Let us hope she will be back tomorrow. Now class, you may file around the room quietly and look at her exquisite drawings. The children burst into applause and even the boys were glad to have a chance to stamp on the floor, put their fingers in their mouths and whistle. Everybody was celebrating her success, but Wanda was not there. Though they were not interested in dresses, but they liked. Look Peg whispered Maddie. There is that blue one she told us about. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, said Peggy. And here is that green one. Boy, and I thought I could draw. Now, who has won the contest? It is Wanda. So, do you think Wanda was lying all this, all this time? No, 
Wanda was not lying. She had hundred dresses all lined up in her closet. Sketches of hundred dresses. I think that is a great task. Even fashion designers, when they make any dress, first they make the sketch and then they make the dresses. So, this is the first step. So, Wanda was not telling a lie, she was telling the truth, she was making those sketches and putting them all in her closet. And, and the end also, because when these two girls used to make fun of Wanda, they would ask her describe the dress, she, she would say there is a blue one uh, and the description which she had given exactly matched the sketch. And she had given the description of a green dress that also exactly matched with the sketch. And Mary was really appreciative of her work. But Peg said, I thought I could draw. So, she was all this while thinking that no one else can draw better than her. That should not be our attitude ever. Let us discuss the questions. Why did not Maddie ask Peggy to stop teasing Wanda? Because she was afraid that Peggy might start teasing her. What was her fear? This was her fear that you know Peggy might start teasing her. Who did Maddie think would win the drawing contest and why? Maddie thought that Peggy would win the contest because Peggy was the smartest girl. She had the magazines to copy the designs, maybe the other girls did not have. Who won the contest? It was Wanda. What had the winner drawn? She had drawn 100 dresses, sketches of 100 dresses. Now here I would pause for a while and would like to talk about the writer of the story before I come to global questions and also language items. Al Busor Esther is a renowned author. She is known for her children's stories. The Hundred Dresses is one of her famous writings. Some of her famous wor works include Ginger Pie, The Moffats, The Moffat series, The Echoing Green, The Alley and many others. She was awarded the Newbery Medal for her writing The Ginger Pie. Eleanor based the story The Hundred Dresses on her real life experience as the girl who received Peggy's hand-me-down dresses. She felt so guilty for not having defended the Wanda character in real life that she wrote the story as both an exercise to assuage her guilt and to encourage others to stand up against bullies. So, have you been able to guess who is Eleanor in the story? It is Maddie. Eleanor felt so bad all her life that she could not get over. She is a librarian, she works in the children's library. She wrote this story as I have already shared with you because she was really guilty. She was hoping that these girls will read her story one fine day and this was her way of saying sorry to Wanda. So, she has expressed her apologies. So, now let us discuss some global questions. That she used to wear one blue faded dress, but that used to be very clean. How do they treat her? They did not treat her very nicely. Okay, they made fun of her. Though in the story, the writer says make fun with her. Wanda was not having any fun. Wanda was really feeling very, very bad. Next question, how does Wanda feel about the dresses game? We are very clearly told in the story that Wanda would stay absolutely calm, no change of expression, no anger, no crying, but there was dullness on her face that in her heart of hearts, she felt sad, she felt bad. Why does she say that she has a hundred dresses? Because she actually has sketches of hundred dresses. So, she was not telling a lie. 
that was her reach. So, she was able to do that. Why does Maddie stand by and not do anything? Mary did not have the courage. How is she different from Peggy? Slightly different we would say because at that time she was feeling bad, but she could not muster courage to tell Peggy not to do it, not to make fun of Wanda or for that matter anyone else. So, therefore, she was slightly different from Peggy. Was Peggy's friendship important to Mary? Yes, of course it was. Why do you think so? Because she wanted to write a note to Peggy telling her stop making fun of Wanda. She did write one note, but she did not have the courage to give that to Peggy and she tore that. Which lines in the text tell you this? So, now this task is for you. Go, go back to the text and find out the lines. Next question, what does Miss Mason think of Wanda's drawing? They were beautiful, they were extraordinary, they were colourful, they were attractive. What do the children think of them? Even children thought the same. How do you know all of this? Because it, the description tells us. Boys were also clapping, the whole class was clapping, the boys were whistling, stamping their foot on ground. That was their way of telling that they also liked the dresses. So, we have come to the end of the story. Now, we begin with next segment that is working with language. Look at these sentences. She sat in the corner of the room where the rough boys who did not make good marks sat. The corner of the room where there was most scuffling of feet. Now, observe the sentences written in italics. Who did not make good marks? Where there was most scuffling. There is another example. The time when they thought about Wanda was outside of school hours. When they thought about these italicized clauses help us to identify a set of boys. Who were the boys? The rough boys. A place and a time. They are answers to the questions what kind of rough boys? Which corner did she sit in? and what particular time outside of school hours. So, these italicized sentences are answers to these questions. They are defining or restrictive relative clauses. Now, I have one activity for you. Some sentences are given. I want you to combine the following to make sentences like the above. This is the bus. What kind of bus now? Question. It goes to Agra. Use which or that? Clues have also been given. Yes, the answer is this is the bus which goes to Agra. I would like to buy a shirt. Which shirt? The shirt in the shop window. Use which or that? Have you done it? It should be like this. I would like to buy the shirt that is in the shop window. Third example, you must break your fast at a particular time. When? You see the moon in the sky, use when. Have you done the sentence? It can be rewritten like this. You must break your fast at a particular time when you see the moon in the sky. Fourth sentence, find a word. What kind of word? It begins with the letter Z. Use which or that. Find a word that begins with the letter Z. Fifth example. Now, find a person. What kind of a person? His or her name should begin with the letter Z. Use whose. Have you done it? It should look like this. Now, find a person whose name begins with the letter Z. 
sixth sentence. Then go to a place. What place? There are no people whose name begins with Z in that place. Use where. Then go to a place where there are no people whose name begins with Z. Now you know what are relative clauses? How they help you to join two sentences by using words like whose, when, where, etc. Let us discuss the narrative voice. The story is in the third person that is the narrator is not a participant in the story. Someone else is telling us the story, but the narrator often seems to tell the story from the point of view of one of the characters in the story. So, who is this character? Have you been able to locate now? Because I told you that Eleanor is Maddie. For example, look at the italicized words in this sentence. Thank goodness she did not live up on Boggins Heights or have a funny name. So, this thank goodness, who is thanking? Maddie is thanking. So, that gives us the hint that the narrator is here within the story, telling her story. Another example, whose thoughts do the words thank goodness express? Yes, of course, Mary's thoughts. Mary's, who is grateful that although she is poor, she is yet not as poor as Wanda or as different. So, she does not get teased. She is thankful about that. There is an activity. The first example is, here are two other sentences from the story. Can you say whose point of view the italicized words express? The first one, but on Wednesday, Peggy and Maddie who sat down front with other children who got good marks and who did not track in a whole lot of mud did not notice that Wanda was not there. Right? Find out the answer. You can share it with your teacher and your friends. Second, Wanda Petronaski. Most of the children in room 13 did not have names like that. They had names easy to say like Thomas, Smith or Allen. Here also you have to tell me who is saying all of this. Can you find other such sentences in the story? I am sure you will be able to find. Share them with us, share them with your friends and also with your teacher. So, now we come to the writing section. Imagine you are going to make a career out of your hobby. Do you also like to draw or you want to have a career in some other field like you want to become an astronaut or a fashion designer, it is up to you. So, what sort of things will you need to learn? That means a lot of hard work, lot of research. Write a paragraph or two on the topic after consulting an expert or doing reference work, research on your chosen area. So, this is the writing task. Your writing task entails research work refer to that area and then write. Then I have a project work for you. Each region in our country has its own dress, is not it? Like if we start talking about you know different states, each state, each region has its own dress and they have given a name to it. What are the names of the traditional dresses? Which type of thread cloth is used to make them. It is silk, wool or any other thread. You have to find out. Write a detailed description of the dresses. With this we have come to the end of this session. Read your story once again. Read it very carefully. Well, if you do not understand the meaning of a particular word, refer to the dictionary and try to get the meaning in the context. Happy reading and thank you.